I'm Selma Schimmel and very happy to be here at the 32nd Annual San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium and we're now going to speak with Dr. Mineta Liu. Dr. Liu is Associate Professor of Oncology and the Director of the Translational Breast Cancer Research Program at the Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center, Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. So circulating tumor cells, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Uh, they're, in truth, circulating epithelial cells, so we're not, in fact, sure that they are tumor cells. We know that they have the characteristics of uh, epithelial cells, which is a subtype of uh, cell, and that we can collect them in the bloodstream. So they've been uh, named circulating tumor cells, but in truth, we're not sure what they are. So explain to us the principle behind the technology. The technology we're talking about is called cell search, which sort of says it all. Right. Um, you know, we've actually known that these cells are detectable in the bloodstream for over 100 years. It's just been uh, up until now we haven't had a reliable means by which to collect these cells. Uh, we know they exist in the bloodstream, that they are prevalent in patients with cancer. There are very, very few patients uh, who don't have any disease, in fact, where you can pick up cells. So these are unique to patients who have a malignancy. Uh, we've seen them in breast cancer, prostate cancer, colorectal cancer, and they mean something. Counting them and detecting them in the bloodstream, which is a very simple thing to do by collecting a single tube of blood, uh, has uh, significance in terms of how patients with metastatic disease will do. A patient may wonder, how is this different from a tumor marker? Right. So the tumor markers, the traditional ones, and I can speak in breast cancer. Uh, we Which have, are blood tests. Correct. They're also blood tests, uh, and we can measure CEA, CA15-3, and CA2729, and they're detecting levels of proteins, and they're proteins that are shed into the bloodstream from cancer cells. Uh, the circulating tumor cells, or CTCs, are in fact collecting intact cells themselves and counting those cells. And so the process itself, obviously, on the laboratory end, it requires special equipment. Mm -hmm. But what can a patient expect? It's a blood draw. And whether you're doing a tumor marker or a CTC enumeration or a blood count or liver function test, it can all be done in the same sitting, and it's simply drawing blood. It's not an extra biopsy. It's not collected in any different way other than, again, a simple blood draw. And how widely available is the technology now? It's widely available. It's been FDA approved for several years now. Um, many reference labs uh, have it as uh, just part of their panel of lab tests. There are a number of institutions like ourselves that we also run it. Uh, it's automated, very easy to use. Uh, most insurance providers are covering for it. Uh, so it's unfortunately, I don't think it's used as widely as it could be, but it's certainly available for use. Is it used to follow patients? Say you're done with your treatment, or at the time when you were diagnosed, such technology wasn't available and now at some time later you're going in for your routine checkup? Is it available for the, those patients? Currently it's approved uh, and should only be used in the setting of metastatic disease. Um, the technology is, although it's, it's great, I think it needs to be perfected. Uh, we don't have the sensitivity, in other words, the ability to pick up enough cells to use it as a screening method. Right? My dream would be a, a woman comes in for her breast imaging study, has a tube of blood, and we use the two pieces of information together to say, you know, you don't have cancer or early cancer, etc. Um, or in the other setting, as you described, a woman who has finished their therapy for early stage breast cancer, and we're all eager for a means by which to tell them, you're not going to have to deal with this anymore. This therapy was effective. We're not there yet. Uh, there are some studies ongoing to look at how many tubes we need to draw. Is it significant? Because we haven't demonstrated that yet. Um, but right now, in terms of its routine use, only in metastatic disease to help follow patients during their therapy. So what I gather is that this is an aid in helping oncologists make patient care decisions. And perhaps you can explain what does that mean? What is, it, it's, it, it's a spectrum of issues that patients face in trying to make decisions. Yeah, we face it every day as we have the patient in front of us, the types of decisions we have to make. I think we all assume that those decisions are relative to the therapy itself and which drugs we're choosing, and that's certainly a part of it. Uh, I think this technology was driven by a desire to 
help determine as early as we could whether patients were going to benefit or not benefit from their current therapy so that we could make a change before we otherwise would based on an imaging study. Uh, and if by changing therapy earlier, maybe we would do better in terms of survival. And it, so it's far beyond uh, a particular drug because you're integrating imaging and other tests and so it's the whole myriad of exams and, and labs and of course imaging mm -hmm. that will help dictate to a doctor a course for a patient. Yeah, I think the decisions other than treatment related decisions about changing drugs, it's um, the appropriate timing of drug holidays. I mean, when you think about it, metastatic breast cancer, our primary goals and goals like one to ten million are really quality of life. And what feeds into that, are, are you tolerating the drugs, are the drugs working? I argue that the time that women have to spend getting imaging studies, it's an IV, it's contrast, a potential for reaction, time away from work, time away from family. Uh, and we do imaging studies every three months roughly just because we're supposed to, not because anyone said that it was the appropriate interval for that particular patient on that given therapy. And to be able to do a blood test, I use it in fact in my practice to help guide when imaging studies are done. And uh, there are a number of women where we're not t doing as many scans. I don't think we're any less effective. But And you know, as a survivor, for me, what it says, and I'm sure I speak for all breast cancer patients and, and, and survivors, that it's empowering. The more information one feels they have about their disease, the greater sense of control Absolutely. we feel. Mm -hmm. All right, so... And confidence. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. All right, so given your area of research, which is, you know, translational breast cancer, mm -hmm. where do you see the future going with such technology and a little thought just about what it is you're working on? Um, certainly, we're trying to better establish algorithms to guide oncologists and how to use the current technology, which is cell search for enumeration, and that's what's approved for. Um, the, it, it just spins though into more areas of research and it's a growing field. Uh, it's not just perfecting means of enumeration so that we can either get more cells or collect them in earlier stages of disease. It's also trying to understand what these cells are and that will more effectively help us personalized therapy using this technology. Counting them matters. I think it helps in terms of, again, guiding imaging, drug holidays, maybe changing treatment earlier, but it would be great if we could actually characterize these cells and direct therapy either against them or use them as a surrogate of whatever we're trying to treat. Um, so in our lab, we're using both cell search and other technologies to collect the cells and look at the proteins, look at the genes related to these cells, because it'll hopefully tell us where they're coming from, because we don't know yet. Um, but more importantly, will it help us to guide the most effective therapies for that individual patient who's sitting in front of me in the clinic? Without a doubt, you are working in one of the most exciting times in, in oncology. Oh, yeah. Transformational mm -hmm. and transitional. Thank you, Dr. Manetta Liu, who comes to us from the Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center, Georgetown University, Washington, D.C. Thank you so much. Have a fabulous rest of your conference. Thanks for taking time. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.